Hi, and welcome to this 360 video. This is Iceland. I'm recording this in my linen bedroom in February 2017. I have a book by William Morris beside me, to whom, coincidentally, I owe debt of gratitude for helping me to write this script. I'm quite proud of this script, and it's a mixture of my words and his. When we travel, we do it to escape ourselves. But we also find it difficult to leave ourselves behind. In the time before the journey has started, before you have reconstructed yourself with new routines and habits, you are emptied of yourself. You're stripped of the habits and coordinates that orient you. Even as anticipation of the journey begins to give way to its actual start, you become fidgety. I was fidgety before I climbed that glacier in Iceland, equipped with ice picks and crampons. There starts a growing tension between the part of you that wants to be off and the part of you that wants to stay at home even in bed, yet at the same time, a fear of missing your plane, a realization that you're disequipped, however much luggage you've brought with you, before the dropping away of habits and coordinates and the ease with which you cobble together new ones. You make rapid new attachments to each other, to blankets, to water bottles, to whatever is going with you. You fear for your unlocatable luggage, leaving something behind, missing the boat, the boat itself, and of others who appear more casual than you. But that will give way to the bravado of travel. Personality simplifies itself, hardens on the surface, and safety is found in ridiculously small things. I used to travel with a tiny golden elephant Alishka gave me from Vietnam. Now anything is going to happen. Travel shows how susceptible and adaptable we are as the there becomes here. You want to keep the moments that made the abstract real. It doesn't sound very funny to tell. Comedy exaggerates itself. Hilarity simply does not survive the telling, just as what tastes delicious or looks beautiful might not survive being transported home. You can't have those moments without leaving the bed. We long for travel as a generation in order to reconnect to those primal feelings that the droll role of life can rob from us, but which travel equips us with daily. In Iceland, as Will did, we saw a great mass of dark grey mountains worked into pyramids and shelves, looking as if they had been built and half ruined. They look as if they rose straight out of the sea. They were all dark grey, turning indigo in the distance under the half cloudy sky and at last we see the first of the great glaciers that looks as if it were running into the sea. And soon there's nothing but black peaks sticking out of that glacier sea. I'd seen Iceland in the corner of a map and envisaged darkness and emptiness that would help me feel off the map altogether. My sense of what to expect was entirely abstract. The surface of calm and a depth of wilderness. A combination of the vague and the absolute. We went to Iceland to get that feeling back. 